Hey guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Human Podcast, where we go down the road of everything anti-aging, longevity, biohacking, and everything in between. Today's biohacking short is about the single most important nutrient in the entire human body. I'll give you a little hint. It is the only vitamin that a human being makes on our own. If you were to check your bloodstream, you'd see that you have hundreds of vitamins in your bloodstream, but you're only capable of making one. We make this vitamin from sunlight and cholesterol, and nearly every single cell in the entire human body has a receptor site for this vitamin. You have any idea what this vitamin is? It's vitamin D3, cholecalciferol. Well, we make vitamin D from sunlight and cholesterol, but specifically the one that I wanna talk about is the most active form of vitamin D3, which is called cholecalciferol. And Vitamin D3 is one of the most chronic deficiencies on the planet. It's estimated that about 50% of the world's population is clinically deficient in vitamin D3. 85% of the dark-complected populations, African-Americans, Latinos, and other dark-complected populations are even deficient in vitamin D3. You see, the darker the complexion, the more sunlight it takes for us to generate this vital nutrient. You know, the, so many people have heard of the sunshine vitamin, but I don't think that we quite understand the importance that this vitamin plays in the human body. In fact, I would argue that it acts more like a hormone than it does like a vitamin. It's linked to an entire array of chronic conditions. This deficiency is one of the easiest for us to supplement with and one of the easiest for us to fix. There's evidence that it helps reduce the severity and duration of COVID-19. In fact, it also can prevent the development of certain autoimmune diseases. I'm going to put that research below. There was a very interesting study published in 2023 in January in the Helion Journal, looking at the impact of vitamin D3 and different neurodegenerative diseases. And there's overlapping pathologies that are shared by a ton of neurodegenerative diseases, such as oxidative stress, inflammation, uh, protein aggregation, where proteins don't fold properly, and demyelination. Demyelination is where the coating on the outside of the nerve is actually eroded and may even expose the nerve. You can think of a nerve as a copper wire inside of a rubber sheath. And that rubber sheath is called myelin. And when that myelin is eroded or thinned, or there's a nick in that myelin or a sore in that myelin, this leads to a lot of the neurodegenerative pathologies that we refer to as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, um, and, and other kinds of neuroinflammatory and neurodegenerative diseases. But as a major kind of neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's disease has a growing patient population in the world. It's actually the main cause of dementia. And at present, I think about 48 million people are suffering from dementia, and this population is increasing at the rate of 10 million every single year around the world. Well, vitamin D has been shown to ameliorate neuropathological features, and vitamin supplementation contributes to a better prognosis, according to this study. It strengthens the immune system, it stimulates the production of T cells, it even helps promote a proper immune response to infections and pathogens, including viruses, bacteria, and fungus that are responsible for all kinds of various illnesses. And you know, if you remember in during COVID, there was some evidence that COVID-19 disproportionately affected minorities. It also um, became evidence that vitamin D3 deficiency was one of the second leading causes of morbidity in COVID. So why would COVID disproportionately affect minorities? Well, it has to do with the pigment of their skin. So things as, as common as influenza, the common cold, share a commonality in severity with a, with a deficiency in vitamin D3. It's been linked to improve brain function. Further research has linked vitamin D3 specifically with improved overall brain function. You know, there are vitamin D receptors located all throughout the brain and throughout the spinal cord. And vitamin D play a role in activating and deactivating the synthesis of neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, and catecholamines, as well as nerve growth and repair. Vitamin D might even play a certain role in preventing cancers. Epidemiologic research shows that there is a lower incidence of certain types of cancers 
for people who live in what we call the um, the Sun Belt, the Southern Equatorial locations around the world. I remember when I was a mortality researcher in the insurance industry, we noticed that the longest life expectancies on Earth tended to be centered closer to the equator. As you got further and further away from the equatorial line, life expectancy had a precipitous drop. Now, we couldn't directly correlate this to a deficiency in vitamin D3, but it's very interesting that the research that's coming out now correlates many of these diseases as being serviced by increased levels of vitamin D3. And by serviced, I mean the severity of these diseases ameliorated by the presence of higher levels of vitamin D3. You can join me in a three-day water fast. I have one coming up on December 19th, 20th, and 21st. Go to theultimatehuman.com, download the free water fasting guide, join me for the challenge. It's entirely free. I'm gonna stay with you every step of the way. We're gonna harness all of the benefits from a three-day water fast. And as always, that's just science. There are also several studies that indicate that there's a possible connection between vitamin D and the development of cancer. Um, additional studies on animal subjects have found that vitamin D helps to protect neurons and reduces inflammation within the brain. All of these factors likely improves the overall function of the brain, helping promote alertness, quicker response times. I'm going to put a link to a study below that also analyzed the effects that vitamin D levels play on a collection of subjects that were performing mental exams. This study found that those that had lower levels of vitamin D3 actually performed worse than those that had adequate levels of the vitamin, suggesting that it actually does improve mental acuity. It boosts your mood. Vitamin D benefits your daily mood, especially in the colder, darker months. This is where the old wives' tale about um, catching a cold came from. There's no such thing as catching a cold. In fact, there's more, more pathogens and, and bacteria outside in warm weather than there are in cold weather. But why do we why do we associate catching a cold with cold weather? Because when the weather gets cold, we layer up. When we layer up, our vitamin D3 levels drop. When our vitamin D3 levels drop, we are more susceptible to common colds. So we link cold weather with the association of illness. I mean, several studies have revealed that the symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, and I used to live in Chicago, and I went to grad school there. I was there for six years. And I learned living in Chicago to believe in seasonal affective disorder. You know, there were several months that would go by where you couldn't even see the sun. The, the sky was just this kind of gray, misty, um, sort of just cold and, and gray. And you, you couldn't even tell how high in the sky you were seeing. You couldn't see clouds. It was just a misty gray cold. And I never believed in seasonal affective disorder until I would get several months into the winter in Chicago. I lived downtown on 10th and Wabash in an area called the South Loop. And several months into the wintertime, you definitely felt the effects on your mood. All you wanted to do was stay inside and eat pizza. <laughs> and I remember it very, um, very vividly. And now that I'm starting to parse through some of the, the research, I, I'm virtually certain that it was linked to my vitamin D3 level. Um, you know, seasonal affective dis disorder has been linked to low levels of vitamin D3. They're associated with lack of sunlight and lack of the production of this vitamin. Hey guys, as you know, I do not push products on my podcast or by social media unless I use them in my everyday life. This is one of those products. Most of us have a very difficult time meeting our protein needs and certain protein sources like whey protein and others can be as little as 20% absorbable. This is 99% absorbable and it has all of the essential amino acids that the body needs to build lean muscle, to recover, to improve our exercise performance, and most importantly, to repair after we have intense exercise. So this is called Perfect Amino by Body Health. It's like I said, 99% absorbable. It only has two calories. Eventually the caloric intake has virtually no caloric intake. It will not break a fast. It tastes amazing. You mix it in water. I take this literally every single morning. If you're working out in a fasted state, you have to take a full spectrum amino acid prior to your workout to preserve your lean muscle and make sure that you're recovering properly. And again, it will not break your fast. So the caloric impact is virtually zero. You get all of the full spectrum amino acids. It tastes wonderful. I use it every single day. You can go to bodyhealth.com forward slash 
ultimate. That's bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate and look for the perfect aminos. They actually come in capsules if you're on the go or it becomes in several flavors that they make in a powder, which I love. It's flavored with natural um, uh, means of flavoring. So there's no artificial sweeteners in here. So this is one of my absolute favorite products. Give it a try. If you're working out at all, you need a full spectrum amino acid. Go to bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. That's bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. I love their lab tested products. You can actually see the absorption rate for all of their products. They've got great electrolyte protein combinations. My favorite is the perfect aminos. Bodyhealth.com forward slash ultimate. And now back to the ultimate human podcast. You know, seasonal affective disorder is a mood disorder, and the primary symptom is depression, and the incidence of depression does rise during the winter months. So studies suggest that the decreased levels of vitamin D3 may even impact the level of serotonin in the brain. Remember, that's the hormone that's one of the main regulators of mood. Dopamine is the main regulator of behavior, but serotonin is the main regulator of mood. By taking a vitamin D3 supplement or increasing your exposure to the sun, you could see a significant boost in your mood. Um, it can even aid in weight loss and weight management. Um, there is another article that I will post below, below um, where the research revealed that people who were deficient in vitamin D3 had a greater risk of coming, becoming obese and developing complications related to obesity. So not only a greater risk of developing obesity, but a higher incidence of complications once they were obese. Um, it can lower the risk of rheumatoid arthritis, um, I posted a seventh study below that found that people who suffer from rheumatoid arthritis, um, a chronic inflammatory disease of the joints, often have very low levels of vitamin, uh, vitamin D. Um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is classified as an autoimmune disease, and the immune system reacts to the lining of the joints as if these proteins were foreign substances. And this leads to inflammation in the joint, which causes the stiffness and the pain and the reduced mobility. So since one of the main vitamin D benefits is to help maintain the immune system and ensure that it's properly function, it makes sense that a deficiency in this vitamin could lead to the development of rheumatoid arthritis or at least exacerbate, kind of accelerate the time frame for the onset of rheumatoid. So by raising your vitamin D3 levels, there's a chance you could reduce the severity and onset of this disease and potentially even other autoimmune diseases. It lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes. This has been well researched. And there is a study below that confirms that there is a link between D3 deficiency and the body's resistance to insulin, which is type 2 diabetes. By overcoming insulin resistance, you could potentially prevent the development or the further exacerbation of type 2 diabetes. You see, the cells in the pancreas that are responsible for secreting insulin, the beta cells and the islets, as a result of not getting enough sunlight, reduce the secretion of insulin from the pancreas, which creates insulin resistance and affects how the body responds to glucose. So we know that vitamin D can help lower blood pressure. Um, there have been several long-term studies that have proven that there's an association between low vitamin D3 levels and hypertension. And until recently, it wasn't known if being deficient in vitamin D actually led to hypertension, but a large genetic study that involved more than 150,000 people revealed that low levels of vitamin D in fact cause hypertension. And this study uh, in particular um, those who had the highest levels of vitamin D had lower blood pressure. And it was demonstrated that by increasing vitamin D 10%, it led to a concomitant decrease in blood pressure of 10%. So if you have high blood pressure or you want to avoid developing it, um, an increase in your vitamin D level might help. Um, it might reduce even the risk of heart disease. Now, the, some of the studies are non-causal, meaning they couldn't link the low D3 directly to heart disease, but there's an increasing number of studies that have indicated that deficiency in vitamin D is a risk factor for developing high blood pressure, heart disease, congestive heart failure, um, peripheral arterial disease, which is um, a condition of the uh, peripheral arteries of the system, and even increases the incidence of stroke and heart attack. So we know that improving vitamin D levels can help reduce the risk of developing heart disease and the symptoms that are associated with it. I'll put a link to that um, article below. There's a whole series of, of clinical studies below that I've tried to summarize in 20 minutes or less. So now the question is, where do I get vitamin D3? What kind of vitamin D3 should I take? 
How much should I take? So guidelines, the RDA guidelines are are considered by functional medicine physicians to be way too low. Um, most of them would recommend 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 minimum. That's 5,000 uh, international units of vitamin D3 with um, 120 uh, micrograms of K2 or a D3 that contains K2. There's also a version of K2 called MK7, I believe is the version that um, is the most bioavailable because if you take vitamin D3 with vitamin K2, it helps calcium that's being transported around the blood deposit into the bone and not into the arterial wall. It's very easy to get vitamin D3 supplements. You can order these supplements online from a medical grade supplement supplier. Make sure that your vitamin D3 is a minimum of 5,000 IUs and has a minimum of 120 to 140 micrograms of K2. That's MCGs of K2. And you should be well on your way to having adequate levels of vitamin D3. You should also get your vitamin D3 levels checked when you get your blood work done. The D3 levels go from 30 nanograms per deciliter to 100 nanograms per deciliter. Most functional medical practitioners would say between 60 and 80 is the optimal range. That's 60 to 80 nanograms per deciliter. 5,000 IUs should get you within that range. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Um, I hope that you take a moment to check out the studies and the links below that I summarized in the podcast today. I didn't want to go through all of the studies because I wanted to keep this less than 20 minutes. I just wanted to get the importance of the single most important nutrient in the human body out into the public domain so people could start to supplement uh, with this critical nutrient. And as always, that's just science. If you haven't had a chance to connect with me on theultimatehuman.com, head over there now and sign up for my free newsletter and all of the exclusive content.